Hello everyone, uh, I'm with VibroMed, uh, which is a medical device company. Let me talk about one of our customers. She's Mary, she's 45 years old. She wakes up one day and she can't speak. Over two months, she loses her voice. She's a teacher, she cannot talk with her children, she cannot talk with her colleagues. And then it takes two years for finally she finds a physician to diagnose her. He tells her that you have a rare disease, we don't know why it happens, we don't know how it happens, but you need to have Botox injection for the rest of your life every three months. We have talked with more than 100 patients and uh, which they have this disorder. Around 40% of these patients they are satisfied with this Botox injection, but 60% of them, they have no solution. Either it doesn't work on them, or they, are not, they don't like it, or they don't uh, they want to have the uh, injection in their vocal cord muscles. And uh, basically, there are around 50,000 patients that they have this disorder in the United States. Our solution is to, use a, uh, is to vibrate the uh, laryngeal muscles. So we de developed a device that it is non-invasive, it is wearable, people can bear it, uh, it will reduce the symptoms of the voice. Uh, people, as a result, they go to the doctor less and, and uh, it, it is an on-demand on type of treatment. Uh, we have funding from NIH, from uh, NSF, uh, from MinDrive, and we are still, it's been five years that we are developing this technology. We have the science now. Now we are basically moving forward with developing, with uh, making it real. Our team is from movement neuroscientists. Dr. Godding is the otolaryngologist. We have a speech expert, so we have a team that coming from both engineering and clinical side. And this is the milestone that we have. So by the end of this year, we will have our MVP. And we go through the FDA approval, hopefully by two years, and then we go for the uh, CPT. Thank you. All right, any wall lines have questions? Elizabeth, do you discuss the revenue opportunity? Uh, so it's, it's uh, 50,000 patients, and the revenue is around two to $300 million, but it's a platform technology. So this is, our beachhead market is $200 million, but we are now going to our the cervical dystonia and the stroke and cerebral palsy that, again, we can use this for rehabilitation. So uh, basically, since we have the funding, we have started with the spasmodic dysphonia, and then we are going to, the, uh, to branch it out to other disorders. Property. So the patent is protected for the device, uh, and so basically we, we, we have licensed it through the University of Minnesota, and we are developing more. And distribution channel, have you talked through that? So we talk, actually we have a really good connection with the National Spasmodic Dysphonia Association, which is the association of this disorder. We have a really good channel through the support groups that uh, we can reach out to the patients. We have made a really good connection with through the physicians that they do the treatment for these patients. So that's the main channel that we are going uh, to move forward. Actually, we talk with patients, and right now, uh, more than 100 patients reach out to us that they're willing to pay for it. The, the price for the device is around, around $10,000, but they're willing to pay for it because they're desperate. They don't have anything else. But the goal for us is to go through the CPT coding, and then if we get the reimbursement, then we will have more patients. Let me just point this one out that we have a patient that is willing to pay $50,000 for deep brain stimulation, and they don't know that if it's working or not. So if you have a solution, they will buy it. Any you talk about your FDA clinical trial that you plan, and how long it is? So we are thinking of going toward the novel, and the, the plan, because there is a humanitarian uh, exemption, device exemption, that's the goal that we have to, for deep brain stimulation for cervical dystonia, they are using that approach. So that's a kind of like faster approach. The goal is to get it into two to three years. Uh, and then at the same time, we are working for the CPT code to, to move uh, both of them at the same time. But uh, the NOVO is the approach that we are going. And, and again, because it's a rare disease, we are kind of like in the um, orphan disease type of disease. So it's, it's, it's uh, part of orphan, yeah. Have you thought about how big your trial should be? Is it going to be randomized? 
we have, we are currently, we are running a clinical trial for a longer duration. Yes, it is randomized. We are having different groups, different types of vibration, different frequencies of the vibration, and to see what is the best, uh, like, to have, we have it. Actually, we are running a clinical trial right now.